Everything is closed. 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 Hello? Anyone there? I just want, I just, I just want seafood. That's all I want. No. So this is the Tsukiji market. Obviously it is one of the biggest draws in Tokyo, Japan. The first time I came to Tokyo, I made sure to put this at the top of my list as a priority. Woke up at 5 a.m., came here, watched the tuna auction. It's very special. Get to walk around the wholesale market. You see some of the best sushi chefs in town come in here to buy their fish. And it's just something that I really do recommend people do. So really just have that one day where you wake up really early to do it. There are multiple ways of doing it. You can take tours, you can come alone, try it and brave it alone because it can get quite hectic. Sometimes they don't let you in, sometimes they do. It's just a lot of fun and it's a really authentic experience even though you'll be with tons of other tourists. After that whole experience, you have two great sushi restaurants that everyone goes to that's in the outer market side. You have these massive shirashi bowls, you have a sushi tasting, lots of different varieties and options. And I think that what the best thing is, is literally the fish comes from here and the fish from all over Japan and seafood from all over Japan gets consolidated here. So you know that the quality you're getting is absolutely top notch. Go around the outer market, you'll find a lot of knife shops, you'll find people grilling, some random scallops, some oysters. The outer market is an easier experience, not as intimidating, it's easy to get around there. And then finally, where we're going today, there's a new building called Tsukiji Oagashi, I believe, and it's a new three-floor building that was initially created for everyone to be able to move there eventually, because the Tsukiji market is said to move soon, they're saying at the end of 2017. They're just preparing the relocation site, and it'll be open, I think, for the public in November of 2017. But these plans keep getting pushed back and pushed back. So Tsukiji Owagashi is not a market, but it's a place where they consolidated a lot of the restaurants. So a lot of the uh, fishermen, the people that work here, go there and eat there. So from anywhere from 5 to 9 a.m. And then 9 a.m. it opens to the public and you have these really nice authentic eateries. It's a little more, let's say, sanitized and clinical than the outer market, but it's a great food experience as well. As I did mention, it is a holiday currently this weekend and this is the Tsukiji outer bustling market. Everything is closed. 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 Hello? Anyone there? I just want, I just, I just want seafood. That's all I want. Usually, this whole space would have lots of activities. You can buy some knives. Just, just imagine it. Hopefully, the Uwagashi's open. That's a newer building, right? No. So that's closed too. We need to figure something out. Usually, you'd have multiple floors with lots of food on different floors, and it's more serene. It's actually easier to get a table here. So just use your imagination and try to make it work for you. But if you're here on a non-holiday, then obviously this would be a really great place to come. So now the plan is we try to find something open and hopefully have some really fresh seafood too. So when there's a will, there's a way. There's people walking around, so there are things open. I hope some of the stalls are open, but it seems like it's mostly some restaurants, not all of them. Some of them are closed, some of them are open, but usually you'd have a lot of these stalls kind of just where you can get one-off stuff and kind of try things, but let's see. Let's see what we find. All right, first stop, we're gonna get some uni. Torch looks delicious. Ooh, someone's cutting in line. We have it in camera, someone was cutting me in line. All right, let's go. Like, I can smell some citrus in there already. There's some wasabi. Everything's torched beautifully. Look at that color. It's so lush, creamy. It almost feels decadent. Should I share some with you guys? I don't know. Do you deserve it? But we have uni and ikura, two of my favorite things in an inari uh, sushi style, which is basically the tofu skin. It's just perfect. Now I'm gonna go for the uni. It's getting messy. Why? Why do you do this to me? 
I'm so happy. I don't care if it means closed, we're still having a good time. It's still really delicious. I think we should get some more food. Get some more food. All right, so for everyone that's wondering why we're doing this, because everyone always wonders where my leftovers go, so we decided to just show you how we really do shoot. So after Erwan eats it, the bowls come to us, camera peeps, you know? I'm the director, and this is what the host serves me up. What do you gotta do? You're in Japan, you don't wanna let this nice uni to waste. You eat all of it. <laughs> I love myself a good tamago. It's like little fluffy presents from heaven. It's just so light, it's cheating. I feel like when you go to Tokyo, all you do is eat. Cause it's just so good. Arigatou Doesn't get fresh from that. And these guys only sell on Sundays and public holidays, so works out for me. All right, grilled tuna. I want to find something that's not good. We need drama in this show. Like, just salt, just pepper, and just like fatty tuna just perfectly cooked on a grill. Like, yes, I could make this at home, but I feel like I could never make it this good. All right, we're looking at trifecta. We're gonna start with this plump oyster. Sorry guys, I don't think there's gonna be any leftovers for you guys this time. <laughs> So I know people are not usually into the really creamy stuff, but that was actually pretty clean. Like usually when you get these fat oysters that are very creamy, it kind of puts you off. That was nice and clean, nice and skinny. Time for the crab. Nice and plump, the way you like it. I'm gonna use my hands. Doesn't get more beautiful than that. Look at that, my friends. I give up, I give up, I give up. Scallops and uni. Mm-mm. Gotta do it. You gotta switch. Sorry, it's gonna happen. Okay. Just kill me, guys. Go for the best thing I've ever had. Earlier, everyone had an oyster. And then I gave him this face. Because he said we didn't have any for me. And so he's so nice. He bought me one. Yes or no? Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Now I know you love me for sure. Raw scallops, probably one of my favorite things with some freshly grated wasabi. I'm expecting this to just be like a whole boatload of sweetness. Just sweet, sweet temptation. You know the type of song, uh, type of stuff you eat and it just has a soundtrack in your head? This is like, I've been feeling fine, baby. Trying to hold back this feeling for so long. It's not a song. <laughs> so now we're back down to the sticks. Unagi. Filthy, smooth. I love unagi because it's just so, it's such a, a fatty tasting fish. It's almost like a pork of the sea. You got some swordfish. Even though it's like sitting there, it's already creeped up, they're just heating it up. It stays quite moist. Tuna, yellowfin. So I haven't found something I don't like. Tokyo, you're making it hard for me. Salmon. I've run out of words, man. New Nagi's the winner. So good. So, so good. You might find it weird that they sell ice cream next to Tsukiji, but I think it makes sense because you need dessert after all that glorious seafood that we just had. I'm so full. We we're supposed to actually have a sit down meal after that, but I think we've grazed so much that you slowly get fuller and fuller, so ice cream makes a lot of sense. Every region in Japan will have different flavors of different things. We have a lot of places with different uh, flavors of soft serve, whether they're artisanally made in the shop and then pressed out, or they're made in pods like this, or even from convenience stores. The ice cream selection is always crazy, and I find it really fun to try all of them. But first, let's try this. So this is a vanilla and matcha swirl. Yeah, it totally hits the spot. And what I love about the soft serves here is never really kind of heavy, even though it's rich and decadent, it always tends to fluff up and be very light and very just manageable in your mouth. After trying this, I feel like we should do a whole segment about just ice cream you can find in a convenience store. I don't 
don't understand this flavor. It's like a confused leche flan. And camote. 